Chapter 15. Wow, Stella, that's such a great dolphin, Miss Bell says as she looks down at my project. She leans over to me. Can you do me a favor? We need a poster for the third grade spelling bee tomorrow. Since you're an expert at drawing dolphins, would you be interested in doing it? I sit up and exclaim, yes. Wonderful, I'll give you the poster and materials. Ever since I shared Captain Rob and Monkey with Miss Bell, she has been giving me extra projects. She also gives me story ideas all the time. Some of them are not that great, but I love that she talks to me as if I'm a good writer. Dolphins are also, one of, are also the mascot of my school. On the last day of first grade, we got to vote for a new mascot. I voted for the dolphin because back then, I mixed up cute little penguins with dolphins. I was really bummed when I saw a dolphin mural instead of a penguin mural when we got back from summer vacation. That's when I started learning all about fishes and all marine life. Come, Stella. Let's go to the supply closet to see what you need. Together, we select glitter, markers, and a poster board, and she puts it in a tote bag for me. I can't wait to see what you'll do, she says. As soon as I get home, I draw a dolphin jumping with big letters that spell out spelling bee. I even put glitter on the waves to make it feel more magical. I'm so happy that I even show Poncho. Look, Poncho, I say. He zips around his fishbowl. I'm pretty sure that means he likes it. The next morning, I proudly stare at my poster as I eat my bowl of cereal. It's so great that my poster will be on display for everyone to see. Then I start thinking about the spelling bee. I don't mind spelling out loud too much, but I also have never done a spelling bee in my life. I ask Nick, have you ever done a spelling bee before? Yep, they're pretty fun. Let's practice. I'll quiz you. Okay, I reply. Spell Bigfoot, he smirks. I groan. Okay, what about alligator? I groan again. Mom takes a sip of her cafe and says, I'm sure you'll do fantastico. Despite mom's encouragement in the morning, I'm so nervous by lunch. Lauren is sitting with us today. Ever since we ate lunch, she joins Jenny and me a couple times a week when she isn't reading. I'm about to ask Jenny about the spelling bee when Jessica interrupts us. Look, it's the weirdo twosome. I think about what mom said on Valentine's Day. So instead of looking up at Jessica, I pretend to ignore her. My heart is racing, but I just look forward and talk to Jenny. What do you want to do next Saturday? My mom said we could go to the movies. Jenny plays along. Ooh, I'll bring candy then. This makes Jessica angry. Did you guys hear what I said? I called you weirdos. Did you hear something? Jenny says, putting her hand to her ear. Nothing worth listening to, I reply. Ugh, says Jessica as she storms out. Wow, what's her problem, whispers Lauren. We shrug. Then Jenny and I give each other a quick fist bump. Then I take a big bite out of my delicious peanut butter sandwich. Secretly, I don't know if I could have been so brave without Jenny. However, I realized that mom was right. Suddenly, I feel less nervous about the spelling bee. The spelling bee finally happens that afternoon back in the cafeteria. I see my poster hanging on the stage. The other third grade class did posters too, but all the kids in my class agree that mine is the best. It looks so good, Michelle gives me a high five. Even Stanley says so. At least I think so. I just see his mouth move and I begin to turn away, but then I remember him turning Roja on Valentine's Day. I force myself to stop and say to him, thanks, then turn around before he can say anything else. <clears throat> Since all the classes in my grade are doing the spelling bee, Jenny is already there. I rush over to sit next to her. She is sitting next to Anna and another girl. Anna is smiling much more than any of the other times I've seen her. I know that's because the other girl has to be her best friend, Isabel. Being that happy is just what happens when you're near your best friend. After I say hi to Jenny and Anna, I whisper, hi, Isabel, and she waves back. I was right. Our principal, Miss Richards, is on the stage with a microphone. She has on her dolphin pin, which she only wears on special days. Welcome, third graders. Today is the annual spelling bee. We're going to be doing it alphabetically, of course. We will have prizes for those who make it into the second round and a big prize for the grand winner. Everyone claps. The prizes at our school are pretty awesome. Kids have won school t-shirts, dolphin-shaped pencils, and even a pizza party. I whisper to Jenny, I hope we get a pizza party, and Jenny nods. Miss Richards calls all the students with last name that starts with A onto the stage. I start to get clammy hands and a sweaty forehead. I didn't know we had to go on stage. Trish Abrahams heads to the microphone first. Miss Richards says, Trisha, please spell the word happiest. Trisha looks around, then she says, happiest, H-A-P-P-Y-E-S-T, happiest. 
Miss Richard presses a buzzer, which makes a er noise. Sorry, Trisha, that's wrong. Good try. Take a seat back in the audience. Jessica Anderson, do you know? Miss Richards asks. Jessica sticks out her chest and says loudly, yes, it's happiest. H-A-P-P-I-E-S-T, happiest. Miss Richard presses another buzzer, which makes a perky ding noise. She says, correct, Jessica, please take a seat on the stage. I don't want to hear that er noise. What if I get a word that I don't know how to spell? Or worst of all, I don't know how to say. My stomach starts to hurt. Maybe I could go to the nurse. I wish mom didn't have to work. Some of the other kids get to go home when they go to the nurse. But mom can only pick me up if it's an emergency. Maybe this is a real emergency. I mean, a stomachache could be a sign of something else that I don't even know about. Before I can figure out my escape plan, Miss Richards says, will all the children with last name beginning with D come to the stage? I look at Jenny and whisper, I don't want to. You'll be great, Stella. You got this, she says as she pats my back. It makes me feel a little better, but my legs feel wobbly, like flan, as I walk onto the stage. There are two students in front of me. The lights are so bright, I can't even see what's going on. Then I hear Miss Richards say, Estrella Diaz, will you come up to the microphone? I gulp. I nod my head yes, and I walk to the microphone. My hands in every part of me are shaking. Estrella, please spell disappear. I freeze. I wish I could disappear. If I spell it wrong, everyone's going to laugh. I look at Miss Bell, then Jenny, both are smiling at me, so I feel a little bit better. But my throat is closed up like I have cotton candy stuck in there. Then I remember what mom said. I'm stronger than I realize. Finally, I close my eyes, disappear. D, Miss Richard says, louder, dear. I nod. D I S A P P E A R, disappear. I hear the ding noise. Richard said, Miss Richard says, correct. You get to move to the next round. Take a seat on the stage. I'm surprised. That wasn't so bad. My voice didn't sound so weird on the microphone. It sounded okay. I sit down and wait for the next round. I actually can't wait to go again. It takes a long time to get through the rest of the students. There are about 80 of us all together, so there are many dings and errs. Jenny makes it through to the next round, and of course, Stanley does too. The next word I have to spell is knowledge and I of course know how to spell it. K-N-O-W-L-E-D-G-E. -E. I swear that ding sounds just a little bit more special the second time. I make it all the way to the third round or the semifinals when I misspell the word dandelion. Honestly, hearing the er noise wasn't so bad, especially since there were only six students left on stage with me. I get so caught up with the spelling bee that the only way I know that I made it to the semifinals is that I get a pink ribbon with a gold star that says semi-finalist. Chris Pollard ends up winning it all with the word gregarious. I don't even know what that means. Stanley also has a pink ribbon, which is surprising. I thought he'd win it all. Maybe we're alike in some ways. Anyway, Jenny helps me put the ribbon on as we walk past the dolphin mural and then we link arms. We make ding and er noises to each other. Maybe we sound like dolphins. No, better yet, robots. I whisper to Jenny, we both giggle as we start walking like robots. I wear my ribbon proudly the rest of the day. I can't wait to show mom, I say quietly to myself. Then I say even softer, maybe the presentation won't be so bad. This time, I kind of believe it too.